The other day we did a tutorial on how to build this all-in-one one-click factory. The factory itself takes 60 iron, 60 copper and 60 limestone per minute in order to produce concrete, cable, wire, screws, iron rods and iron plates so that we can start building a factory wherever we want with one click providing we have a little bit of power. With that done we're now going to move on to the more advanced stuff because I teased that I had already produced a blueprint for both the rotors and the reinforced iron plates. Well today we're going to be working on reinforced iron plates. The factory is a 4x4 four four grid obviously with it being a blueprint and it produces a total of 10 reinforced iron plates per minute from 120 iron ore and you can see it's pretty clean and compact. Well I'm going to be showing off how to build all of this today so if you do find this video helpful if you do like it then make sure to hit the thumbs up and obviously if you want to see more of my content make sure to subscribe as well because we've got plenty more and just to reiterate that for this build you will need 120 iron ore per minute that is a mark one miner on a pure iron node or a mark two miner on a normal iron node to make this build as easy as possible we have broken it down into three parts here you have the lower floor the first floor we also have the cut out of the second or mid floor as well as the third section which is the top floor obviously i'll be taking you through the whole of the process but should you wish we do have this blueprint available to our patrons as a little bonus. So if you want to support me on there and allow me to continue creating this content, this is a way that I can give back to you as well as give you my saves on a monthly basis as well. To start off the build, the first thing that you're going to want to do is build out the floor. It's a four by four grid using the mark uh, mark one the one meter foundation the next thing that you want to do is build the first level around the outside as walls so we know what we're working with and as we mentioned in a recent video on factory planning we're also going to want to place down the inputs and the outputs which is going to be here along with that we also want to have some kind of entrance whatever you choose that to be with all the walling around the lower section we're now going to grab our splitter this is going to tell us where we want to place our constructors and what we want to do is just have the input of the splitter over the edge here so we're going to place it on the lower section so that the bottom section does not go over the edge but the input does from here we're going to place the constructor down and we want this pretty much touching and we're going to place another constructor next to that and you're going to want to connect that with a mark one belt and that one also from here we're going to be placing our smelters our first smelter needs to be in line with the splitter and we're going to place three more of these and we're going to place the splitters so that they're just nestled slightly within the smelter input. This should allow us to do a nice easy 90 degree turn on the last one and do remember that you are going to need to use the mark two belts from this section here to the input which I will put as this line here. From here, we're going to want to place our mergers. Now that we're going to place this directly in front of the third smelter, and then this one can be fed like so, and this one pointing outwards. From here, we're going to set all of these smelters to iron ingots. We have 30 going towards the iron rod constructors here, which will then merge and they're going to head up to the next floor using a conveyor lift. And there we go. That is the first floor. At this point, we want to place the walls again around the outside. We're going to do it one high and this can just be a normal box factory wall for now. We can decorate this later. And then we're going to grab the one meter wall section here. It's quite important as it's going to be the height for the next factory. With that in mind, we're going to grab a, an elevator here and do bear in mind, this is going to need to be a Mark II belt now. And we are going to bring this around to the center point here. We're going to have it over the middle point and then we're going to take it two spaces towards the elevator like so. And then we're going to, instead of going to the right this time, we're going to go up to 
and turn it about. And we want the elevator for this section going up to the next floor, not against the wall, but one section away. So for that, we're going to have to place this in the middle here. Now you can use elevator holes, but because they're still bugged when it comes to blueprints at the moment, I tend to either not use them or I will place the elevator uh, conveyor lift hole down, but I won't use it. You can then delete the stackable poles. And on the opposite side now, we're going to grab a merger, place this just into the output of this constructor on the end and connect these up. We're then going to grab a, another elevator. Notice it's one meter away once again. It's not quite in line, but it will do. We're gonna take it up to the next floor. At this point, you can fill this section in and make sure to set both of the constructors to producing iron rods at 100% clock speed. To make it so that we can walk up to the next floor, we're going to place a catwalk crossing here and then we're going to place the catwalk stairs up here, bend like this and head up. But I am going to do a little bit of magic here because we need to go up to the next floor. So in order to do that, I will place this here and place that there. Now we need to have this section like this. However, I'm going to play around with it just really quickly using the barriers in order to change the snapping point so that I can hopefully make it so that we just clip this into this section. So how I've got to this point is I have placed on top, three levels high, the one meter foundations, and then one barrier here. Now, from here, I'm going to place the next foundation, if we can find the right position, just into that. This barrier is one meter off. So from here, we should be able to place that down. That's, I think that's actually one meter too low. Okay, yeah, so from here, we're going to connect that in and you'll notice how it goes inside there. And then from here, we can delete all of this and once again, place down the small catwalk crossing, then the stairs and then these two corners. And voila, we are on the next floor. You're also going to need a conveyor lift, which I think think goes here, could be mistaken. It might need to go here. We'll, we'll check this in a moment, but I think this is the right position. I was actually mistaken. The conveyor lift hole needs to be placed on this section just here. And from here, we're going to make sure that this is enclosed so that we know what we're working with, the space that we've got. We're now going to be placing six splitters and they're going to be placed on the middle edge of each of the three foundations and on both sides so that they're aligned with these elevators. For the next part, we're going to want to fill in this section as it can be quite finicky. Make sure to have the Mark II belts along the lower section and the Mark I belts across the top. And from here, we're going to place six constructors so that they're snug against these uh, splitters that are in front of them. And we'll do this on both sides. You now have six constructors. The bottom three are going to be set to the iron plates and the top three are going to be set to iron screws. And thankfully to keep it all clean for this, it is all running at 100% clock speed. So we don't need to worry about overclocking or underclocking. The next thing that we're going to want to do is place down mergers in front of the two middle and two outside constructors. You can connect these with Mark I belts, but make sure to connect the screw line with a Mark II belt. At this point, what I have done is I have placed a stairwell either side and I've run a walkway also around the side. This side will eventually go up to the next level and this side I've placed so that we can walk down onto this floor. We'll then have the screws running up to the next floor as well as the iron plates here. So let's fill in the walls again and get prepped for the next level. At this point, we should be four walls up. And from here to get the right point for our next level, we're going to place 
two one meter walls on top and we're going to grab our one meter foundations. Note that the one meter foundations, though the lights are clipping into them, they won't be clipping through the top. Once this is done, you're going to want to place your conveyor lift holes and they should be placed, I believe it's in the center, one meter away. I could be mistaken. There we go, perfect. And you'll notice that they are being brought up on this floor, one, two, three, four. And on the other side, remember mark two, we're going to take this up six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Next, we're ready for the top section. So we're going to fill all of this in once again. And at this point, we are ready for the last section. But before we get ahead with that, I would like to say, if you are interested in checking out some chilled music that has been produced by us and recently released, do check out my new album, Reflection, on Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube Music. It's copyright free, so if you are a content creator, you can use it yourself. And I feel it's the perfect lo-fi chill vibe to listen to when you're doing builds like this. Check the link in the description below. For the placement of the assemblers, we're going to place one directly over the center here and then one directly over the edge of these two foundations. We're then going to merge them in this location here. And we're going to set these both to reinforced iron plates at 100% clock speed. At this point, we're going to be placing two splitters. The first one should be directly in front of this one and three high and then connect that up with a Mark 1 belt. And from here, we're going to place a single Mark 1 elevator there, connecting it directly to it. Note that if you didn't get the right placement, these will not be able to connect unless it's slightly higher in which it'll be fine but this is the lowest increment that you can you can do and then we'll do the same with this stack it for high delete the three underneath and then connect this with a mark two belt and then we're going to want a mark one elevator on this side so we will have a mark one belt connecting there and then we'll do the same on this side with another mark one belt and the last thing to do is to connect the last iron plates on this side and connect them up if you have your placing correct you should be able to connect them up have perfect right angles without any issues and of course the last thing that we need to do is make sure that our elevator hole is just on the edge here Ooh, i may have placed that in the wrong spot we just checked downstairs i had made a mistake with its placement so the conveyor lift hole does need to be a one up it's going to clip ever so slightly into that belt and then we will place this one here we should be able to place this directly through here and then grab that and bring it down. And we're just going to have it so that it exits this way. And we're going to bring this line up using the ceiling mounts along here and across so that hopefully we can get it in line with that. And from here, we're going to have the output of our 10 reinforced iron plates per minute. From here, the last thing to do for the working factory is to enclose it and place the power. As you can see in this build, I've used just simple ceiling mounts for the power and I've done this throughout. And at this point, you have a working one-click all-in-one factory producing 10 reinforced iron plates per minute, providing you hook it up to some power and 120 iron ore per minute. I won't talk about the decorating of the outside because that's going to change for each and every one of you, your personal preference. But if you do want to check out a guide on how to decorate do check out this next video that I'm going to put in the, the credits section, which is about changing box factories like this into something a little bit more decorated. Of course, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. But guys, we're going to leave it there. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity Ben, Star, Shoku the M and Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Adam the Useless. Do check out the video on decoration. You can see it here. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.